25% of these masses are bilateral. Okay, so now I will draw the diagram about the cystic teratoma and its clinical importance and sonographic values it is very very important you understand that it is a young girl a young girl is having this tumor 25% they are bilateral 75% unilateral now try to understand that if this is one ovary and this is another ovary. This girl has no baby yet. And she found that one of the ovary has dermoid. Okay, so this is dermoid. That is teratoma. And this is normal ovary. Normal part of the ovary okay and the other ovary is fine this is normal you are scanning and you found this you found the iceberg, like um, it's a bone, tooth, they hyper equate followed by shadow, looks like iceberg. We call it arc of majority. <laughs> okay, so now this part is wrong defined. Who is this? Then according to the characteristics, you will see, you feel like this is dermoid, this is the teratoma. And now this ovary is doing normal. Now, do you think this is a young girl? The surgeon will take off the, this whole ovary? No, 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 no. You never know. One day this ovary can be damaged. And if you take this off, so then what's going to happen? This girl will be infertile for her whole life. That's why your uh, ultrasonographic performance must be very, very accurate. What is very accurate? That you really found the dermoid that is that size. You measure it nicely. That is this size. So now, if I draw the, the normal part in the different color, then you will see that what I have to do now well, the, as a surgeon. Do you think they will take the whole ovary out or they will do the very selective surgery? very selective surgery they will keep the normal part of the ovary intact and they will take the ovary out yeah dermoid out they will take the dermoid or teratoma out that means 
they will okay so this is the dermoid this dermoid part it was out and the normal ovary is this they will keep the half of the ovary that is normal part of the ovary intact and this part will be taken out dermoid part is gone dermoid part is gone and this is the normal ovary so if you cannot figure it out that which part how much the dermoid and how much the normal it is tough it is challenging but you need to learn how to rule out that how many parts of the or what percentage of the ovary is damaged they will take this out if not taken out this whole ovary can be taken by the dermoid so then there is no way you they have to surgeon has to take off this whole ovary so that is very important okay we need to remember that okay so now I will go over the uh, thicker lutein cyst okay so this is done this is done now I will go over the thicker lutein cyst Lutein cyst etiology it is in the ovary there's a thicker cell in the ovary okay and that cyst develops in the ovary from the thicker cell due to the over influenced by the beta ACG hormone okay so now it is found in the presence of tropoblastic disease of the uterus it is found in the presence of tropoblastic disease of the uterus and we call Tropoblastic is a gestational tropoblastic disease. Let me tell you a little that tropoblastic disease means the tropoblastic cells form too much inside the uterus instead of developing the embryo. Maybe there is completely absence of embryo or trophoblastic means the um, embryonic placental tissue is forming abnormally or partially. Okay? It can happen that the twin pregnancy, one is normal and one develops as a trophoblastic or molar pregnancy, we call it. So it is found in the presence of the tropoblastic disease and 
extremely beta HCG is extremely high. extremely high, 5 to 10 times higher than the normal. Then sono appearance complex cystic mass with thick irregular wall. Complex cystic mass with thick irregular wall. I will draw it. And the multiple separation may be present. Yes. Okay, so this is known as Thika Lutein Cyst. Let me draw it. So no appearance. Patient shows beta AC is positive. That means pregnancy test positive. Hey, it can happen without pregnancy. If there is a aberrant or ectopic um, chorionic villi or chorionic tissues present in the ovary that time it uh, there might be uh, growth of the chorionic tissue and beta HCG may be positive so now when the beta HCG is positive in female and is extremely high you have to consider as a gestational trophoblastic disease and then you need to check the ovary and in the ovary you should expect the theca lutein cyst but if in a man when the beta HCG is high mostly it is cancer testicular choriocarcinoma or teratoma okay so now you are looking for the ovary and you found that this is a ovary and the ovary has Okay, ovary has multiple septation complex cystic area. This is over here, okay? So this is complex cystic area and this is ovarian tissue. Okay, if you see this then you have to measure the complex area. You need to measure the ovary. Okay? And compare with the 
beta HCG take the history from the patient sometimes you might see if the patient is having in vitro fertilization and there was an induced ovulation and then bet in the beta HCG is very high because of the multiple gestation because of the in vitro fertilization and implantation more the baby more the beta HCG and you might see thicker little cyst in the ovary too okay sometimes the ovary is hyper stimulated with some medicine yes Okay, or any cause the ovaries are hyper stimulated, you need to you, you will see the beta HCG level is high. If you see the beta HCG level is high, consider a couple of things. The pregnancy test is pregnancy is positive. How many gestation, how many pregnancies in there? It could be multiple because the beta HCG is high, or it could be um, hyper stimulated or it could be molar pregnancy just a sort of a plastic disease okay so history is very important then look for the ovary and if you see this type of uh, complex cystic area then you have to understand that this is thicker lutein cyst and patient is not feeling good because of that too much beta HCG causes too much nausea, vomitus. Okay, and patient is really, really sick. Okay, so um, uh, I'm going to stop it here now. And polycystic ovarian disease is the big lecture, so I'm gonna discuss those things uh, later, and then I will cover the rest of the materials. Okay, so thank you very much for um, paying attention and I hope you enjoyed and you are learning little little more and more. So finally you will have a composite consolidated information that you need to use while you are in the practice as a sonographer in this field and you will be happy and patient will have a diagnosis promptly and everything will be fine okay thank you very much for your time